This is where the Beta FPV Light Radio 3 comes in. MSRP is 60 US dollars and it comes with the choice of either internal Express LRS or internal FR Sky. The budget segment of FPV radios has become one of the most saturated segments of the market. Manufacturers have seen how well the Jumper t Light had sold over the last 12 months and also how well the Premium Tango 2 has done in sales. This makes it even harder to cut through the noise when trying to make a purchase. When we're looking at budget radios, ideally we're trying to hit the $50 mark and stay well under $100 for the radio itself. We also want something that is going to provide us excellent range, good ergonomics, plenty of switches, compatibility for an external module, and preferably hall sensor gimbals. Now, when we look at this feature set, normally you'd be looking at options like the Jumper T Pro, the Radio Master Zorro, the iFlight Commando 8, or even the Jumper T Line. So this can be a hard decision to make because you can buy brand new and spend a little bit more money, but you're spending nearly double to tick every single box. So this is where the Beta FPV Light Radio 3 comes in. MSRP is 60 US dollars and it comes with a choice of either internal Express LRS 2.4 GHz or internal FR Sky. It has a lanyard mount, trainer port, USB-C to connect to the computer as well as charge, JR Lite or a nano module bay for external transmitter modules. The gimbal is a potentiometer and not hall sensor. They seem nice and I really can't tell the difference between these and the hall sensor gimbals on my Jumper t light. They also have a nice gunmetal colour to them, the stick links are also adjustable as well. You have two two position switches which are SA and SD, there are also two three position switches which are rocker style SB and SC. Now my rocker style switches felt a little sticky and didn't move with the freedom that you'd expect and it felt like a downgrade from the normal three position stick switches that you usually get. It's a beefer radio compared to the Light Radio 2, which gives it a more solid feeling in the hand. There is also this rubbery feel to the touch, and this helps give it a perception of a more premium radio. The construction does what it can to make you feel like it isn't toy grade, and I think it just scrapes past the toy-like feel, even though it appearance may prove a little otherwise. It doesn't have a screen, however at $60 you're going to have to accept some cut corners as well as gotchas, such as with the Express LRS version that I mentioned earlier. To give some further context around that, Beta FPV have forked the Express LRS project and Express LRS firmware is merged into the firmware of the radio. This means you're at the hands of Beta FPV to support new features and functions. Configuring the Light Radio 3 is done exclusively on the Beta FPV configurator, which is a little buggy, but it manages to work when you figure out how to work around those bugs. The configurator is where you can set your channel map, output power, packet rate, and your binding phrase. And it serves its purpose well enough. Beta FPV are pretty active in their development, and at the time of this video's release, there is a version of the Light Radio firmware that's compatible with ELRS 2.0, but it's only a release candidate and not a full version. The pre-release firmware does for now disable the external module bay on the Light Radio 3. I've pinned a comment with a link to the release candidate firmware for the Light Radio 2 SE and the Light Radio 3. Please read the release notes. The radio's internal ERS module has adjustable power output from 25, 50, and 100 milliwatts. And you're probably thinking that 100 milliwatts isn't great because you can get up to one watt of power on an external module. Well, ELRS has been tested to 35 kilometers on 100 milliwatts with a 250 hertz packet rate. So I think 100 milliwatts is gonna be more than enough for most FPV pilots flying quads. Now, while I did mention you can get one watt of output power on an external transmitter module, this is not the case for the Light Radio 3. The Light Radio 3 is powered by a 1S battery, so just like the Jumper t Light, you're going to be limited to a maximum of at least 250 milliwatts and probably up to 500 milliwatts in some cases. However, I wouldn't recommend this, it's going to drain the battery very quickly. To switch between the internal and external modules, you first power off the radio and then hold the bind button when powering it on. The problem with doing this is, well, the bind button is recessed, so you're going to need a pen tip or something pointy to be able to do this. It feels like it's a good idea in theory, but in practice it's not really that convenient. I would have preferred a long hold of the power button to switch to the external module. 
So this implementation makes it kind of difficult to use and a bit of a mute feature. Now what you should buy comes down to your use case. The Light Radio 3 is an excellent choice for pilots with a number of existing FR Sky based quads and wanting to either get into Express LRS or join the TBS ecosystem. Buying the Free Sky version and adding a 2.4 GHz ELRS Nano TX module for $40 gets you bang on $100 US dollars. Adding the Crossfire Nano TX for $70 gets you to $130, which is still $40 less than a basic Tango 2. You may be then thinking, well, what about the Radio Master Zorro? The base model of the Zorro comes with the CC2500 multi protocol module and is $80, which will allow you to connect to FreeSky based quads. The Zorro has a rather large screen and gives you full Open TX or Edge TX and all the customization and capabilities that come with most of the other radios. It also has the more superior hall sensor gimbals and is 2S powered and this means any external module that you'll add will have more output power than the Light Radio 3. There is also the option to include the Crossfire Nano TX when buying the Zorro for a total of $150. Those wanting to start an FPV and stay exclusively with Express LRS then it would be better to save a few extra dollars and buy the Beta FPV Light Radio 2SE ELRS version for $45. It will serve as a worthy backup when you eventually upgrade to something more premium. For existing pilots already on Crossfire or Tracer looking for a backup then this really only makes sense if you have an existing nano transmitter module that you plug into the back otherwise like I said earlier the Zorro is the better choice. I hope this has given you enough information to make an informed decision about the Beta FPV Light Radio 3. If you're a beginner to FPV please click the link in the description to check out my course Ready to Fly which is the ultimate beginner to FPV course. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.